Okay, guys, uh, from what we have uh, left uh, before. Okay, on the output voltage ripple. Okay, on the boost converter, we are stabilizing the current by using our inductor. And we shall stabilize our output uh, voltage by capacitor. So the capacitor actually is the element that used for set stabilization of our output voltage ripple. So in practice, a finite capacitance will result in some fluctuation in the output voltage or the output uh, voltage stability or ripple. So the peak to peak output voltage ripple is calculated from the capacitor current waveform which we can see from the current waveform that we plot on the capacitor uh, point of view. So this is uh, the voltage from the inductor point of view, current in, from the inductor point of view and this is the current for the capacitor point of view. In terms of the curve, it will follow the same curve per watt we have in or uh, per watt it pass through the uh, inductor. But in terms of level, we have to shift minus the I0. Means that the IC is equal to IL minus I out. I0. Okay. So it shifted below. So the amount of delta Q here the amount of uh, the difference of the charge value will represent the amount of our charge capacitor that we use for calculation. Okay, the delta, the parameter of delta Q here is equal to I0, which is V0 or V0 divided by R times the duty cycle of the period. Okay, it's equal to the amount of capacitance times the difference of uh, output voltage level. So if we rearrange re the calculation, uh, the, the formula becomes uh, the voltage ripple of our output divided by the average output voltage is equal to D or the D cycle divided by R, C and F. The amount of ohms uh, value times the capacitance value times the frequency T is equal to 1 over F. 1 over F is equal to T. So 1 over frequency is equal to our uh, duration of period. So we rearrange if we uh, want to see how much the capacitor value that we need for our uh, ripple that we require. So it means that the amount of ripple that we require over the amount of voltage average uh, output. So this is the, the value of the formula. C is equal to D over R times uh, the difference of uh, the, the voltage ripple divided by voltage upper value times F. Okay, this is the filter capacitor value that we need to put into our uh, our system such that the amount of ripple we get with this value. So it means that the higher the capacitor value, the lower the ripple that we can obtain but the more cost we have to put in actually. So another components that we uh, consider or we have to consider inside our boost converter is the inductor resistant uh, element. So in general or ideally the inductor should be designed such that it have a smallest resistance such that the power losses can be uh, minimized. We can optimize the efficiency. We can see that the P in is equal to P out plus P that losses on the inductor. If we take a look at the circuit, we can see that the amount of what we supply to the circuit is the amount of the power that being delivered to the inductor, a diode, capacitor, and also the load, the output here. So actually, uh, diode we have uh, we consider ideally as uh, no loss, even though we have a power uh, voltage drop across the diode, and also we have ESR, equivalent resistance uh, capac on the capacitor. But we consider this one, these two as ideal, means that we don't have 
uh, much contribution on the losses from these two elements. But from the inductor point of view, we have to take uh, note on that because the losses, the P supplied is equal to P losses on the inductor plus P that consumed by the load. The P in is equal to P output plus the P that lost on the inductor. So P in is equal to V source times I that comes in or deliver from the source to the load. So P uh, V I L. The P out is an amount, amount of V out times the I that come across or pass through the diode. The diode current. And the losses at the inductor is the amount of current as well as uh, the current that passing through our uh, source IL square times the resistance of the inductor itself. Because if you take a look at the inductor, the fabrication of inductor is composing of a lengthy conductor which wrap, uh, wrap along or uh, onto the uh, core. Sometimes it's just a air core, sometimes we have a ferrite core, like a transformer. Okay, the resistance of small inductor resistance does not change the energies of bulk converter. However, with, uh, it will affect the performance of the boost converter, especially if we put in high duty ratios. Okay, if you take a look at the uh, graph or the uh, pattern of the uh, from our textbooks, you can see that. We can see that if we plug, we plot a boost converter uh, output, the output V out over V S. Okay, from the duty cycle of zero up to maximum of one point uh, oh, or maximum of hundred percent from zero to hundred percent cycle. So we can see that we can boost up our system converter from uh, unity up to two times the input means that if we have 10 volt input we can go up to 20 volt we can go up to 30 volt we can go up to 40 volt four times and we can go up to 10 times of voltage but this is in terms of ideal ideal plot without the element of inductor resistance but in actual case when we have a higher value of inductor resistance so the issue will become like this or the pattern will become like this when it reach up to two times and three times the input voltage in terms of magnification or multiplication so we have no problem but it will reach to the certain levels of let's say from 0 0.8 or 80 percent of the cycle the curve will be haywire see it will instead of rising up in terms of the output voltage we tend to go down down to zero and as well as the efficiency if you put, put uh, a plot in ideal case the efficiency you can see that the efficiency is maintained at 1.0 because today there's no losses no losses happen on the circuit means that the inductor the capacitor the diode it don't, does not consume any power it does not uh, transfer the power into heat but in uh, non-linear non or in the practical case we have a voltage uh, power drop due to the losses that happen inside our inductor so it will tend to go down so we have to take care means that the limitation of the duty cycle you can uh, uh, manipulate on our boost conductor is up to maybe 0.2, 0.4, 0.6 and 0.7 is that at 0.7 of duty cycle, 70% of duty cycle, the efficiency already dropped. And 80%, 90%. Means that 10% of the output will turn into heat losses. You push some more, the losses will dominate. You push up to 8.8 .8 or 0.9. So you can, you can see that instead of you are delivering uh, the power to your load, now you are delivering power to become heat so you might damage your system so you have to take care of this because when we consider the the element of inductor which have 
inductance uh, value and it have a resistance value so means that we have to consider the losses that happen there and we have to limit in terms of our switching of the loop cycle ideally the output voltage depend on the V source over 1 minus D but when we involve the losses that happen due to the uh, inductor resistance so the new formula will become so the new formula will become just not V0 minus V0 over uh, equal to Vs over 1 minus D but V0 equal to Vs divided by 1 minus D times 1 over 1 plus RL the resistive of our uh, inductor divided by R1 minus D squared so this is the formula that involved when we consider the resistance inside our inductor so this is how we uh, generate this formula you can see that when uh, we have amount of I load uh, I inductor square R L here so I D is equal to uh, I load 1 minus D we put inside our 6.83 here the equation become the input power equal to the power that absorbed by our load and the power that losses at our inductor so we rearrange the equation we put in the two cycle so it becomes vs equal to this formula and we arrange rearrange we put v out in front so it become this formula is that if you have d which is cycle or you have sorry you have r which is zero so one divided by one plus zero times here means what one divided by one you become the normal equation again uh, v not equal to vs divided by one minus d but if, if if you have the amount or the element of rl here the inductive uh, induction the inductor resistance value so the higher the resistance value the the higher the losses that contribute from the inductor into the system so next we go to the DCM, discontinuous conduction mode. What this means is that when the average conduction and uh, the voltage is zero. It means that we have uh, during on and off. During on, the voltage rise up from zero to maximum when the duty cycle happen. So when the cycle is off, it will go down and it will reach zero and zero and we have a dead time between the the on off and another cycle to start we have a dead time same goes to the previous bug converter dcm so this is happen on the ccm uh, on the boost with the dcm so in, when we plot on the inductor point of view in terms of the voltage this is the plot of your inductor current so this inductor voltage so we have applied on the inductor then it comes to negative and it goes back to zero so we have three level here positive negative and zero positive negative then zero so on the diode point of view when it pass through inductor so we have a cut off on the diode when we switch off the uh, the switch, we have current that flows into the uh, diode by ram down and it turns to zero. So we have single pass on the during the off time of uh, switch. Okay. So the average voltage across the inductor is also zero. We said that zero. So V out is equal to V S D times a plus D one over D one. So D, this is D1. Okay. So this is the average maximum current and the ratio of the switch when the switch is open. 